Hey everyone, my name's Tenebris and welcome back to Road to Vostok. Today we're going to be discussing the realistic and incredibly interesting approach to storage that we'll be seeing in the game. Using an approach inspired by games like The Long Dark, Road to Vostok's Prepper Stash inspired shelter storage system will add to the immersion of RTV greatly, throwing unique challenges toward the player that you don't typically face in survival FPS games. So first off, what is the plan for storage in Road to Vostok? And it's gonna be really cool. We'll have a bunch of shelters scattered across Area 5, and in Vostok itself, we'll have just one shelter to make use of. Shelters are safe areas for you to store your loot, and they work like checkpoints, basically being the only way to save your game currently planned as far as we know. And I mean, before we get into the storage thing, this concept in itself is going to be so hardcore when you finally get into Vostok proper. There will be one single place to save your game and 10 maps filled with permadeath. Getting to that shelter is going to be essential in your raids through Vostok's maps. But that added risk of making it back to your shelter will just add to the already really intense gameplay loop, and the way shelters will serve a purpose here in Road to Vostok will be huge, not just as a place to store your gear, but as the sole place to save your game and really take a breather to get yourself sorted for what you'll do next. And speaking of sorting, your shelter will be the only place you can safely store your gear, but you won't be storing it in any old box or bag. No infinite stashes in RTV, instead you'll have to manually line your shelves with actual in-game items. Think something like Bethesda style prop manipulation, but now with even further purpose, because there won't be some magical box that you can throw everything into and forget about. I feel like there's a very real chance we could see shelters wind up like this, a hoarder's paradise, or maybe a prison. But we could also see shelters serve as really neat and organized spaces, with wall racks and tables to hold our guns, shelves for boxed goods, either medical, food, or ammo. And here's the cool part. All the shelters will be taking up different approaches to what a shelter is. So one could be a tiny hole in the ground where you can barely keep a few scraps of food and meds as you pass along, but another might be a full-on cabin giving you the space to place your larger items and weapons. This is going to naturally guide us towards specifying our shelters for different purposes, which is something I'm very excited to break into someday on my channel here. But the shelter in Vostok itself is where we again see a doubling down on the hardcore nature of Road to Vostok. In Vostok, however, you will only have one shelter, and this shelter is quite different from those in Area 05. This shelter is meant to be hidden, and the location is randomized in each game, so it's also unique to every player. The shelter can be used for storing loot and saving your game, just like in Area 05, but this shelter isn't customizable and it's quite opposite from being a safe area. The developer Auntie says one line at the end here that really sticks out to me. This shelter will be quite opposite from being a safe area. And this is crazy, man! So if you make it to your shelter in Vostok, you'll have to be ready to potentially fight for it and have to maybe defend it when venturing back to the shelter. So if you get really messed up in Vostok and are looking for a safe place to return to, your shelter might not actually wind up being the best spot to go to right away. Sure, you could still save your game and store your loot, which will be essential in Vostok to avoid over encumbrance, but if your health is too low, you might not want to risk the venture. And to add to it, the location of your shelter is randomized per playthrough, which I'm really interested to see what that fully means. We might see a couple different types of shelters in Vostok, which could add some variety to whether or not Vostok is a habitable place for you. But on top of that, its randomized location might mean that realistically it just isn't the smartest place to return to, depending on your progress into Vostok and how you handled the difficulty spike. It'll be crazy, man. I'm gonna pray to Aaron Jesus for a centralized spawn on my Vostok shelter, as that will probably be the best case scenario for venturing deeper into Vostok. When we get to the first public demo, we'll have one shelter to work with, and this will likely be the shelter we saw in the third devlog from our TV. Nothing too crazy, but something for us to see how the system all works, and this is something I think will be best experienced firsthand with a huge amount of potential to unfold into something crazy and give us full-on proper doomsday prepper immersion. 
So far, we know we'll be storing healing items, food, and ammunition, but on top of that, with the recent announcement of fishing and boating, we could definitely store fishing supplies, then all the supplies to keep our own gear in top shape, weapons, and then the modular clothing system. There will be a lot we'll be putting in these shelters, and based on the shelter you're in, what you store there will be essential to getting ahead in the world of Road to Vostok. So I want to know as we wrap up the video here, what do you think of this realistic approach to storage in Road to Vostok? Or the multiple layers that are going into how shelters will serve a purpose? Let me know in the comments down below. But for now, I just want to say thank you for watching. We got a lot more in store for this game, so as always, stay tuned, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.